Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Monday, November 18th. Another update in the markets. The melt-up continues. Dow up 85, NASDAQ up 13, S&P up 7.5, and, and Russell up just about 5 points. Uh, no stop in this train, and uh, I would not be getting in front of it. And I, I mentioned many times, remember that price is king. Price is what pays the trader and the investor. Uh, despite what's going on, uh, I would not be looking to pick tops. That would be detrimental to your account. Let's move on. Lots of indicators and lots of charts to go over today. So I'm putting this out on Sunday so you can uh, uh, peruse as you're at your leisure and um, try to get uh, something out of this. Now, I do think um, that the markets are literally are now basically confirming in an in a asset bubble. Um, there's no two ways about it. It will eventually end really, really ugly. Uh, whether it's Janet Yellen coming in to office, selling the news, or, um, or, or some sort of tapering. Um, the markets have been up since October 9th, and forget about even prior to that, actually, since really all of 2013, the markets really have never looked back with some small little blips, two-day moves lower, and then, um, you know, followed by 13, 14 days to the upside. Not what you want to see yes if you're a bull obviously but that's not healthy for the markets because eventually the markets will end pretty ugly now that does not say that the fed will not continue to stand by um its qe program and uh i think there's a bigger picture involved uh, if the markets if the economy is so good why is the fed continually to pump liquidity into the markets they see something that we don't see as uh, normal everyday um individuals anyway uh enough of what i think i think uh i do think though um you need to really be cautious in this market there is just about everything that's extremely overbought yes it's not a sell signal but it's a definitely a red flag and a word of caution what am i doing looking for best quality setups intraday uh, reducing risk and if i am looking to put on positions i'd be looking for the best quality stocks that have pulled back and now have created some bases and breaking out of bases and if you're looking to do short and if you are looking to short the market, um, I would not be looking to short the market at all at this time unless you're looking for a hedge, which is a great opportunity. And I'm going to show you the VIX. The VIX actually closed outside of its Bollinger Band, which we'll, I'll explain that to you in a moment. But um, when volatility is extremely low, uh, buying protection is very cheap. And I definitely recommend that despite the fact that we've continued to gone up. Uh, there's an extreme amount of complacency in this market, uh, which gives me a big red flag. So please, guys, use caution here. The markets will not go up forever like this. At one point in time, it's going to turn ugly. We don't know when it is. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the catalyst is. What we do is continue to stay on the side of the trend, which is up. Uh, and again, if you're looking at short stocks, look, look to short weak stocks, stocks that have a catalyst, stocks that were downgraded, um, stocks that, that missed big earnings. Um, something like that is what I would be... Uh, more inclined of doing than looking to short the market other than a hedge okay so um here we got the uh, bullish percent spx that went back on a buy signal um so i'm going to put a line going across here now we do get some whipsaws from time to time uh, but the bullish percent uh, is actually a very reliable indicator however we are at the 83 percentile which usually we get a market move lower so um just keep an eye on this this could whipsaw again and again remember indicators are just that indicators price is what pays price follows any indicator at all so just remember that this just gives you an, opp an opportunity to say hey you know maybe the indicators are, are kind of rolling over and uh, markets are still going high, so we have some divergence. Just It just gives you the, the red flag, the word of caution, to be cautious here. And then when we, when we do get that confirmation via price, and then you can actually full swing into whatever would be a longer or short idea. Okay, so bullish percent, here we are right up in this 83 percentile. Again, word of caution, but we are still bullish. Now, here's the mix up here, right? Uh, the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange Salmation, that's very reliable indicator. This is only on a weekly, remember. This is on a sell signal. Uh, and if you look back, and you could pause this video, you'll see there is a couple of whipsaws, but very reliable picking tops and bottoms. And we are at a top at one point. I'm not saying it's a tradable top yet, but, you know, this week I think would be very interesting to see. Remember what I mentioned a few weeks back. I said, hey, listen, you know, this market's been up since October 1st. Forget about even prior to October 1st. And we are coming into seasonal time of strength. But 
we looked at the Trader's Almanac, and out of eight times out of 50 years, this market has been overbought and grossly overbought to, to, this, to the fact that um, we did not have a Santa Claus rally. Actually, people started taking profits early because now we're into the middle of November. Okay, another two weeks. We have another four weeks of active trading. After that, after Christmas, between Christmas, um, New Year's, and the week after, the, that, that three weeks is totally dead. So we only have about another four weeks left. So I think that you're already in. Me personally, I think you're into the Santa Claus rally. If the market doesn't take a real good setback, a real good correction in the next week or so, and the market just kind of drifts higher, I think we're into the Santa Claus rally early and people will start taking profits prior to the lock into their gains. Forget about the, uh, never mind the tax selling that comes on top of it. So that's my assumption. There's nothing to trade off of, but I just want to let you know that's what it looks like that so far. Now, if we get a good correction, six, eight, nine percent in the next week or so, and then we start to rally, then we could get that Santa Claus, that anticipated Santa Claus rally again, right? Um, because it looks like we've already had a Santa Claus rally from here. But anyway, um, uh, New York Stock Exchange Summation Index is on a sell signal, okay? Uh, now, if you look at the, um, the NASI, um, oh, excuse me, that's uh, not what I wanted to show you at the moment. Uh, here we go. We have the NASDAQ Summation Index. That is also on a sell signal. So two reliable indicators that I like to use to look in for bottoms and tops, at least a local top or a bottom, is on a sell signal. So that is definitely giving me a word of caution saying that we might sell off a little bit this week. Okay, but we do have some mixed signals here. Now, the McClellan Oscillator, in fact, is telling you that we have plenty of room to run to the upside, even though we are overbought in our momentum indicators. But our, our, New, York, our um, New York Stock Exchange McClellan Oscillator, the NIMO, is telling us that we're not, and we can still run higher. And this is also a reliable indicator. So, again, um, a little bit of a mixed bag. New York Stock Exchange, new highs and lows, starting to come up a little bit, which is fine, right? But if you come in and look at the... Um, uh, New York Stock Exchange new low, that is also ticking up. So a little contradictory of the two. Now we have the New York Stock Exchange uh, new high, 52-week um, high. This, in fact, did break out of the trend line, but still is not as high as it was when we were making new highs in 2012 and 13. Okay, We're still below the 2013 mark here, early of 2013 of late. And you can see that now we're just on a tick higher, but again, lagging. So another... Um, if you will, another um, feather on the cap to say, hey, listen, definitely a word of caution here, okay? Um, stocks above the 50-day moving average. That has gone back onto a buy signal, but it didn't get into a buy signal at 35 and 40. We we're back up these 80 and 90 percentile areas where we look for some sort of a pullback in the market. Now, how big of a pullback, how big of a correction, no one knows. If it even is a correction, we could have a two-day pullback, and then the markets rally again. So... Um, I would not, even if the market pulled back, we need some really good confirmation that we're breaking some pivotal lows and making lower lows and lower highs on a daily basis, on a closing basis, not on an intraday basis. So, again, um, a word of caution here that this market is so far stretched, it's going to be only a matter of time. And another thing that I wanted to mention out that retail inflows have been the highest since 2008. So retail investors are buying at these tops. Not good sign. Not a good sign. Okay, now uh, let me just show you. Um, uh, let me show you the U.S. dollar. Now, this is going to come. This is interesting because the dollar is now paused. It looks like it's bull flagging right in here for another move higher. Um, but watch the dollar because the dollar starts to break out higher too. You're going to have safe haven flows coming in, money coming out of stocks, and possibly even going back into bonds and. Um, and uh, utilities and uh, consumer staples, some safe haven sectors like that. So keep an eye on what happens with the dollar because if that starts to break out higher and then you see the VIX start to break out, um, that's something that's interesting that's going to happen here. So keep an eye on that. Uh, prior to going to the VIX, I want to just show you gold. I think gold is still a big sell. I think we may get that tradable bounce though in gold, and I'll tell you why. We, we're, we have a double bottom here. And we are still making low lows and low highs, so we still have bearish symmetry. But I do think that gold possibly may have bombed that we can see probably a test of these highs somewhere into the 1400 area, which would be an ideal short. Even if you know you're looking to short up here and you want to leg in here, again, based on your own trading plan, this is looking really good. Now, for a tradable bounce, 
Um, it's very, very easy to manage. You got a double bottom here, this price low here. You know, and see what happens on Monday. Start the breakout of this little consolidation for a trade. You can look to um, try to get gold up into the 1316 area, which is good 30, 40 points above, or to break out higher and test this little shoulder. Remember, we had that bearish pattern here. We got the head, left shoulder, right shoulder, and the neckline comes right in here, which we're testing the neckline now. Okay, so uh, we still haven't broke that bearish symmetry as far as this new pattern, but overall, if you look back to the left side of the chart, we are making lower lows and lower highs. So I like gold as a, an, a, the next tradable bounce. I like to get into a short, um, or a, uh, if the market does start to capitulate and start to break down again, uh, gold would be a good tradable bottom for anywhere between 1000 to 1150 start accumulating some gold in that area. Remember, gold is still in the bear market. Now, the reason why I'm saying, look at palladium. Palladium broke out and failed the first time. Normal. It's normal. That does happen. If you see, try to break out here, failed. Try to break out here, failed, creating this big symmetrical triangle. Remember, this is a really a quiet leader. This is the leader in all the metals is palladium. Palladium now is at the apex of this symmetrical triangle. If this market wants to start to break out, this is going to take all of the other metals. Copper, <laughs> I, might, I might beg to differ, but um, at least gold and silver, um, I would be looking for a buy. So if we can get palladium to break out here, if palladium starts to break out, uh, gold will, will definitely follow. And that's something that we will definitely have that tradable bounce. So watch that. Watch what palladium does. Now, what another interesting market is, 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 is crude oil. Um, crude oil, I just put some price, 20 day price channels. We are at 20 day lows of these price channels in purple. As you can see what happens, we bounce, we test again, and we rally hard. 20 day lows, rally hard. 20 day lows, rally hard. 20 day lows, rally hard. Boom, boom, boom. 20 day lows, we fail. And now we're back into this big support area. Now, to me, I think for a trade, I think crude oil is a good spot right in this area. Now, you got to take out, you got to look for an entry based on your trading plan. Um, but if you can take out 92.50 and then you have this area up in this area here, it comes out to, I think, 90, 94.50. You're in this consolidation. And obviously, if it breaks this low, then we're going to go lower. But if we can take out this high, which would come down, the, the, you, as you can see here, the 20-day moving average is coming lower and lower. Again, we are still in a downtrend. No two ways about it. However, but for a tradable bounce, maybe back up into the 98 area um, is something that would entice me. Easy to manage. You're below to here. You're a little below this cluster would be somewhere you stop. And then, of course, if we could take out this high, uh, then I, would, I believe that we can see the 200-day moving average right up in this area. So keep an eye on it. Uh, again, use your own trading plan, but this is something that I'm going to be stalking in the next coming days. Okay, now what's even more interesting is the VIX. The VIX actually closed outside of its Bollinger Band. Now, I know it's a sloppy chart, but I want to show you um, right up in here. We have closed in black. These black layout lines are the 20-day uh, Bollinger Bands, and we have closed outside of it. If you can see, let me open this up a little bit more. We are outside of that band. We close. Now, we need a, we need in order to get a buy signal in the VIX. We need a close in the inside of the channel. Okay, if we close inside to, on Monday, right, recording this on, sun, on Sunday, if we can close inside it, then that would confirm a buy signal in the VIX, a sell signal in equities. And maybe we might get a couple of days pullback. But keep an eye on the VIX tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be the big, big factor, meaning Monday. Okay, uh, all right, so let's go into, um, let's go into our chart segment. And something really interesting here. I said to myself, wow, I looked at the monthly chart, which I always do once a week. I'm like, this is really interesting. Um, we are so stretched here from the 2009 lows. What I did was I took a Fibonacci retracement. So let's see where the next level is from high to low. And sure enough, the 1272 extension would be right up in here at the 1838, 1840. Now you're saying, Mark, that's insane coming up all the way here. But you know what? It really isn't. It's, it's only another you know, give or take 40, you know, 50 points. S&P, we've made, we did six yesterday. We're doing 10 to 15 in a clip a day if the really market wants to. We can get up there by the end of the week if you really think about it. Now, I think it is a little bit far-fetched that we are here, but it's not out of reach for the end-of-the-year target, okay, for an 1839, 1850 
um, target of the 1272 extension. I just thought it was interesting to see where the 1272 extension is on the monthly chart. Right? So now let's go into um, the daily chart. We've met, not only have we met our 1272 extension, but we've exceeded our 1618% extension. This is what I'm saying, guys. When you're starting to hit these large extensions, you have to tighten your stops. This is very dangerous. This market can roll over at any given time. There is lots of support, though. Look at the 20, look at the 50, look at the 200, and the averages are all pointing higher. So even if the market were to sell off the 1720, 100 S&P points, we would still be in a bullish uptrend. That's why I'm saying if you're looking to sell the market, I would be looking to short weak stocks instead of the market itself. Okay, um, I do think the market is due for a pullback months ago, but I'm not looking to continually short the market. As much as I'd love to see a market pull back, which would reset all of the overbought uh, readings on, on stocks and, uh, and reduce some of these lofty valuations where we are, in stocks and in the ETFs, I would love to see that because I'd like to get more aggressive, but I'm not because this market could easily roll over and like we did on Thursday, one day, and then boom, we're up five days in a row. Now, it, we could, it could be the opposite. We could be down five days in a row. You'd be down 70 points in the S&P. So uh, right now, the risk to me is to the downside where all of the retail inflows are coming in and we have mixed bags, mixed signals. This is why I'm nervous about it, okay? All right, anyway, so we hit the 1272, 168, 1618 uh, percent, and now we're back up to the next target would be the 26, 216, and then, of course, way, way up above, which I don't even have, would be the 2618, okay, which I'm not even going to put on at the moment. But anyway, here's where we are, as you can see, grossly overboard. Okay, um, Spiders Monthly, just want to show that to you on the Ninja chart. This is the uh, uptrend channel breaking the long-term 2009 uptrend channel where we have this bearish rising wedge, which, again, only bearish if it broke. So this, this, this did not happen at the moment. Okay? Uh, let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly, we are coming into resistance. This is the uptrend channel from um, 2013. We are coming into resistance, guys. Okay? That's why, to me, I think we're going to get some sort of a pullback this week. It just looks that way on the charts. Not looking to short at the moment, but if it does give me an opportunity, that's what I'm going to look to short. Okay, here is the um, uptrend channel again, just on the daily chart. Again, took out of that consolidation that we were in for the last eight days. All right, um, let me show you um, the SPX average true range. Showed this to you many times. As you can see, when the markets dip low over, the average true range starts to increase, so our volatility starts to spike. We are still below here. So to me, this is actually a very good sign for the bulls that the ATR is at, at extreme lows because when, when you have extreme complacency, there's no volatility, right? So we, we obviously know that from the VIX. Okay, um, there's the daily chart. Let's go into some of the ETFs. Here's the diamonds, again, making new all-time highs. It's so funny that... The last, prior to October 9th lows, nobody wanted the Dow Jones at all. Test the 200-day moving average, everybody's getting into the Dow Jones Industrial Lab. It's just, it's just crazy the way this the market moves. Um, but anyway, we are at all-time highs again and making all-time highs every single day as we speak. Transportation sector ripping to the upside um, on low volume, reducing volume anyway. So again, not what I'd like to see, but again, price is uh, king. Price is what pays us, and we're now getting into the upper end of this uptrend channel. Word of caution. Here is the IWMs. Uh, not as good as the other one, as the other ETFs, but again, the other sectors. But risk on, no question about it. Took out the uptrend, the downtrend channel, a little flag pattern, and now moving higher. We still have a lot ways to go to the uptrend channel here, the upper trend line. But again, look at the Bollinger Band starting to pinch here. So use caution here. And XLF. Now, I've been saying the XLF. This is what I want to show you with the banks. The XLF, I said, guys, looks like a breakout here. Watch these banks. Remember, they, they could be on their own even if the market were to come, come in a little bit. The reason why is interest rates are rising. It's going to be good for the banks because they make a lot more money to their bottom line. Uh, and as you can see here, we have the Bollinger Bands pension. I said this about Thursday. When we, broke, we started breaking back out here, had the little flag and we broke back out. Now we're starting to move higher and we have a confirmation breakout. Let's see what happens here. Usually we get a little bit of a pullback. If it can hold this breakout um, uh, resistance, which is now support, I think we're going to see the banks go higher. And let me show you JP Morgan, Goldman. Here's Goldman. Now look at the Bollinger Bands. Pinching really, really tough here. 
That's why I, I still like Goldman as a long uh, until we start to break this little consolidation area. Goldman, to me, is still a good trade long. Now, yeah, we did pull back. Some of the banks pulled back at the end of the day. But I think Goldman is ready for a big breakout. Remember, easy to manage. Just below the 159.65, you can put your stop, give or take a little bit extra room. Or, depending on your trading plan, you can put it below here. Uh, JP Morgan officially breaking out of the symmetrical triangle. So, to me, I think the banks are a buy. Uh, buy on any type of pullback, I think the banks are a buy here, guys. All right? And then... Um, I'm going to show you the banking index, the BKX. And if I open this up, first of all, before I even show you the BK, this is the BKX from uh, early 2012. Now we're at this symmetric, we have this um, ascending triangle, which we just broke out of. And let me just break that, get that a little closer. Um, as you can see here, we broke out of this ascending triangle. Last hurdle is the upper end, the resistance bar, right? Coming around, right around 67 or so. But you can see we are clearly breaking out of this. This is all bullish. So the banks indeed helping this rally. Uh, when the banks rally and the financials, uh, banks and financials rally and you got tech rallying, it's a good sign. And then speaking of tech, we're breaking back out of this head and shoulders pattern looking really good. Uh, and Apple. Now Apple here broke out of this little range. So you can look for a trade to the upside on any pullbacks on Apple. But again, here's yeah, the little little flag pattern into this trend line. I like it. We consolidated a little bit. Now we're breaking back out again. Uh, 529 needs to take out, and then we can see at least the high is the 538. And lastly is the Q's. As you can see, Q's doing well. But again, look at the Bollinger Band starting to pinch. So it means we have a little bit uh, building some pressure here. And if the, uh, if the uh, um, tech actually starts to rally as well, we're going to see some nice upside again in this market. I know it sounds crazy, but I uh, use a word of caution, this market could change on a dime. And if the market does change to sell mode, we can lose easy a month's worth of gains in two to three days. Okay, remember, uh, markets are more fearful than greed. Greed greed and fear, two different factors here. When fear, when you get markets hit fear, markets move much more faster than greed. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I want uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And... Um, I know it's a long video, but I definitely wanted to get that information out to you. Use caution this week. Uh, looks like the markets are ready to either going to blast off or look to come down. I think you're going to have a little risk to the downside, and then we would reevaluate uh, what type of um, sell-off, if any, if it's just a consolidation or a light, light pullback. We'll see what happens. But this will be an important week, to say the least. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.